Hello everyone. Today, we embark on an enlightening journey into the captivating realm of food forests, delving deep into their definition, design principles, layers, species, and management. Additionally, we'll unveil the extraordinary benefits they bring, enriched by insights from seasoned experts in the field. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay updated on all things sustainable living. Now, let's jump right in. So, what exactly is a food forest? Well, it's a system designed by nature that produces food while maintaining a perfect balance. The design principles are rooted in mimicking natural forest systems, allowing for self-maintenance, self-replication, and the use of productive species for sustainable food production with minimal input. What is a food forest? Well, we're all quite familiar with forests, and forests as an ecosystem, with great diversity of plants, animals and fungi, all harmonizing together and interreacting in many, many niches and layers, designed by nature, maintained as a system in perfect balance. Well, imagine that as a system that produces food. The majority of the elements in that system being productive. That's a food forest. So by understanding how nature designs forest systems so they're self-maintaining, self-replicating, we can model that system with productive species so that we can produce food in the most sustainable way with the minimum amount of input for the maximum amount of output anywhere in the world. That's a food forest system that we can actually design and work with in long-term and permanent situations. Okay, but what is nature doing? Well, you might have noticed that in temperate climates, if no intervention is made, land will naturally progress towards a balanced, sustainable, and resilient ecosystem. This is a process known as succession. Succession is a dynamic and continuous process, and it can take decades or even centuries to reach a climax community. Each stage of succession prepares the environment for the next stage by altering soil conditions, nutrient levels, and microclimates. Different species dominate different stages of succession with more specialized and complex organisms gradually replacing the early pioneers. Okay, but how to mimic this to create a food forest? All forests have layers. So you start off with a canopy layer, that's the top of the forest. Then you have understory layers, and under those you have bush and shrub layers, going down to herbaceous layers, which are non-woody plants. And then you have a root yield, you have plants that actually have large starchy roots. And then on the ground you have ground covers and you also have a vertical layer of climbers. Now all forests have those layers. In the tropics you can have emergent palms and understory palms and you can have slight variations in different climates but you have a basic set of layers that occupy all the space. When we design a food forest we put that layering system into action to our benefit for production and maintenance through function. Comparing food forests to traditional agriculture, we see a stark difference. While most agricultural fields are full of annual plants, food forests mimic natural ecosystems with seven layers, providing a more stable and diverse environment. Plant food forests by planting support species at the same time as the fruit trees and managing the support species to shelter and boost the productive species. Or we can just plant the pioneer support species until we get a stable canopy. But we don't want to go the other way round. We don't want to start with the productive species and work hard with lots of inputs to keep them in a healthy state. The support species do the work for us. It can be up to 95% of the mass in the early years are the legume trees and the mulch producing trees that produce the biomass. We prune these and these trees shed nitrogen to the soil because they have relationships. They're classic pioneers and most are nitrogen fixing species. In other words, they have rhizobium bacterial partners. 
in the soil that take nitrogen from the air in the soil and bring it into their plant bodies. And they then eventually die and that nitrogen is added to the soil. Now we can speed that process up. We can sacrifice those species with good timing after we've put them into relative placement. So over time, the species we sacrifice open up opportunities for our productive species. They shelter and support and provide the fertilizer, the soil conditioning and the humus. So we stack the system in space, but we prune in relation to time. So we wait for the time of year when there is more rainfall than evaporation. After the period where it's been dry and the evaporation is higher than rainfall, there we need shade and we leave the shade up. But as soon as the rainfall gets heavier and higher than the evaporation, we can start to cut and open up light avenues and space for our productive species to take up the gap. Now over time, when we get to establishment, we've got less and less mass in pioneer support species and more and more mass in the productive species. And we end up with a reversal of mass. We have 95% productive and only 5% in support. So we don't just stack in space, we stack in time and we speed up the process. Food forests offer several advantages compared to traditional agriculture, emphasizing sustainability, diversity, and ecological balance. Food forests are designed to minimize soil erosion and nutrient runoff. The diverse plant species help retain water, enhance soil fertility, and reduce the need for artificial fertilizers. This approach supports long-term soil health and conservation. Once established, food forests often require less maintenance compared to traditional agriculture. The diverse plant layers create a self-sustaining ecosystem, reducing the need for constant tilling, weeding, and other labor-intensive practices. The multi-layered structure of food forests helps create a microclimate that retains moisture. This reduces the need for extensive irrigation, making food forests more water-efficient compared to many traditional agricultural systems. Food forests can provide a continuous yield of diverse crops throughout the year, as opposed to traditional agriculture, which often relies on seasonal planting and harvesting. This continuous production contributes to food security and a more reliable food supply. The design of food forests encourages natural nutrient cycling. Support species, like nitrogen-fixing plants, help replenish soil nutrients. This reduces the need for synthetic fertilizers and enhances the sustainability of the system. The extensive plant cover in food forests contributes to carbon sequestration, helping mitigate climate change. But, are food forests producing enough? And what we want is a functional diversity. So uh, we could have a, a density of plants, but if they're all the same, then they just compete with each other. The more diversity we have, the more likely each species can find a niche and the overall production of biomass and food produced will be much higher than if we have a reduced uh, diversity or monoculture. So the overall production is always higher. The production of the individual crops will go down slightly. So when we have a mix of crops, each banana plant will produce, say, 5-10% less than a banana monoculture. But when you combine the different yields of banana, chirimoya, tamarillo, sapote, lucuma, inga bean, taro, pie melon, all of those things that we have in the system, and you put them all together, then we probably double the overall production of food in the system. Animals can be strategically introduced to accelerate succession in a food forest. In fact, they play a crucial role in the establishment and maintenance of food forests, contributing to their overall health and productivity. Larger grazing animals, such as cows or goats, can be employed to clear vegetation in the early stages of establishing a food forest. Their grazing activities help remove unwanted plants and create space for the planting of trees and other vegetation. Chickens and ducks can be used to condition the soil. Their scratching, pecking, and foraging activities help break up compacted soil, control pests, and contribute to better soil aeration. This enhances the overall health of the soil 
promoting optimal conditions for plant growth. We can use animals to help us establish food for us. We can graze with larger animals, then they have to be out of the way because we're putting in the small plants. We can put in poultry, chickens and ducks, and they can prepare the ground. And then later on, when the trees are up, we can bring in maintenance cycles of chickens and ducks to speed the system up. And that way, we can use our animals to gain an advantage while they're productive for us at the same time. I'm sitting in a food forest that's been recovered by ducks. This section here was well out of maintenance. I had quite a lot of long clumping grasses and unwanted plants we call weeds. We've put a fence around it, a temporary fence, electric fence, but we haven't even electrified it. We put in a hundred or so Muscovy ducks. In just over three weeks, they've totally changed the area. They've eaten most of the green material They've flattened out the grasses, they've manured the ground, they've conditioned the soil, and it's ready for replanting with the support species and interplants and fruit trees where there's gaps. Taking this time advantage, this process of dynamic event, we can now jump in and put in a whole assembly of plants that'll bring it to a diverse interactive stability and possibly go right through to maintenance without ever needing this event to happen again. This is taking time advantage from an animal interaction to a replant, which we can do any time we slip up on our maintenance. If you would like to know more about food forest systems, check the links in the description of this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and comment below with your thoughts. Until next time, Keep growing, keep thriving, and let's make the world a greener place together. Thanks for watching.